Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are here. Your presence is here. We thank you that you want to meet with each and every one of us today. Lord, I pray you'd bless us. Bless us with your presence. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said? Amen. Hang on. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. In Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. Please turn your Bibles. Thank you, Noah. Always wanted to tell the keyboardist to get off. Thank you, Noah. <laughs> Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. When the Israelites were at Rephidim, they were attacked by the Amalekites. So Moses told Joshua, have some men ready to attack the Amalekites tomorrow. I will stand on a hilltop holding this walking stick that has the power of God. Joshua led the attack as Moses had commanded, while Moses, Aaron, and Hur stood on the hilltop. In verse 11, the Israelites outfought the Amalekites as long as Moses held up his arms. But they started losing whenever he lowered them. After a while, his arms were so tired that Aaron and Hur got a rock for him to sit on. Then they stood beside him and supported his arms in the same position until sunset. That is how Joshua defeated the Amalekites. Back to verse 11. The Israelites outfought the Amalekites as long as Moses held up, as long as he reached up his arms but they started losing whenever he lowered them. Winning? Losing. Winning? Losing. Not sure. Undecided. Winning? I'm going to preach a message this morning called Reach. We are in a series of our church called Check the Foundations, and one of the key things that we wanted to discuss over the series is worship. Now, there are many ways that worship is depicted in the Bible so many ways. In the Old Testament, uh, the Israelites would build altars and sacrifice a bull or a goat or a lamb or pigeons or grain or a wave or I'm not sure how you sacrifice a wave. Um, King David is synonymous with the words worship and warfare. Jehoshaphat led his armies with a worship team at the front rather than with infantry at the front. Joshua marched around Jericho. At the end, they sounded instruments. Romans chapter 12, 1 says, our life is worship, we're a living sacrifice. Jesus said, we worship in spirit and we worship in truth. We live as worshipers. But today, I wanna to talk about connecting with God in worship. You've gotta reach. Say it with me. You've got to reach. Tell your neighbor. You've got to reach. Tell the person you have a crush on. You've got to reach. When I was a kid, one of the, the first lot of movies that I watched uh, were Disney movies. We loved, anybody here a fan of Disney movies? We loved Disney movies. And uh, Snow White was the first movie that I ever watched. Um, so mum and dad took me as a three-year-old to Snow White. And I asked them recently, I was like, mum, how did that go as a three-year-old watching Snow White? And she says, oh, darling, it was terrible. You cried and you cried and you cried and cried. We had to stand up and walk out of the cinema. And so that obviously didn't go that well. And, uh, but I loved The Lion King, and I loved Aladdin growing up, and then Disney actually bought this company called Pixar, and they released this movie called Toy Story. <laughs> and Toy Story was, it's the first Disney movie to be animated, but not a musical. That was a surprise. It was honestly game-changing in many, many uh, areas. And Toy Story centered on two characters, Buzz Lightyear, who said, to infinity, and that's right, and Sheriff Woody, and, and Sheriff Woody was a little toy doll sheriff, and he had a little drawstring on his back, and you could pull it, or they pulled it in the movie, I couldn't actually pull it, but <laughs> you, it could be pulled, and he would say certain phrases, like, there's a snake in my boot, or somebody's poisoned the waterhole, or reach for the sky. 
And I didn't realize at the time, but Sheriff Woody was preaching. He was. He preached right into me. When Joshua went into battle with the Amalekites, what is so incredulous, what is so ridiculous, what is so ludicrous is that the battle isn't won or lost based on military might. You would think that going into war, you would fight a battle and win it based on your strategy, your tactics, or how good your warriors are. Now, I'm a bit of a military nerd. I do not know why. It's just a part of me. So I did research into Joshua's army, and they had sickle spears, and they had sickle swords, and they had long spears and short spears, and they had bows, and they had arrow. They had heavy infantry. They had artillery. They had a reconnaissance unit. They had a sniper team that were slingers and they could hit people at 400 meters away, which is so bizarre. But this war was not won based on their military might. The army won dependent on whether Moses lifted his arms. When Moses reached, they were winning. When Moses lowered, they lost. The reach of Moses determined the ascendancy of Israel. Church, our reach determines the trajectory of our lives. The way we reach determines our victory. It determines the way we go. When you reach for something, you stretch out your hands. Now, some people have more reaching ability than others. My sister is four foot 11. Now, she would try and tell you that she's five foot. I just want to make it abundantly clear for everyone under the sound of my voice that she is four foot 11. She has less reaching ability than Ray Moore, than Eric McGee or Joseph McGee, or in fact, all of the McGee family. You know, there's many ways to reach. We're not talking about reaching down. We're not talking about reaching an agreement. We're not talking about reaching the end of the road. We're not talking about reaching for the stars. What we want to talk about today is reaching to God. Job chapter 11 verse 30 in the message, and I really want want you to catch this, says, still, if you set your heart on God and you reach out to Him, if you scrub your hands of sin and refuse to entertain evil in your home. You'll be able to face the world unashamed, keep a firm grip on life, guiltless and fearless. And keep catching this, you'll forget your troubles. This is what happens if you reach out to God. You'll forget your troubles. They'll be like old faded photographs. Your world will be washed in sunshine, every shadow dispersed by the day spring. Full of hope you'll relax, confident again, you'll look around, sit back, and take it easy. This is what you happen when you reach out to God. Expansive, without a care in the world, you'll be hunted out by many for your blessing. Somebody's got to give God some praise for that right across this auditorium. Church, our reach determines our reward. You know, we, we start these church services with singing. Today we started with a song, you see on Let Us, and uh, we don't start with a game, we don't start with communion, we don't start with the preaching, we don't start with notices, and by the way, we choose our songs very carefully. We look at the theology, yeah, Christy Lee's laughing because it's true, we look at the theology, we look at the season of our church, we look at the atmosphere every song could create, we look at the way the song approaches God, is it about God, is it to God? You know, we look at every single detail, and when we look at these songs, our prayer is not that people would sing. Our prayer is that every person would reach out, would reach out to God. Write this down. Singing is an action, but reaching is a posture. Singing is an action, but reaching is a posture. When we worship, our worship is not about actions. It's not about religious activity. We want to do more than actions. We want to shift our hearts and our spirits towards God. Church, because worship actually isn't about us. We aren't looking down at ourselves. This isn't my moment. 
my comfort, my desires. We're not navel-gazing, we're reaching. When we come together, we've got the opportunity to reach out. The quality of our worship isn't, isn't whether the worship leader is in tune, it isn't whether the bass player is handsome enough, isn't whether the sound mix is good or bad. The quality of our worship is determined by the way we reach. Now, Pastor John oh, always used to say this one phrase. He said, uh, we're not here to sing kumbaya till our hands get sticky. Has anybody heard him say that phrase before? And, you know, I've got to be honest, I didn't actually understand this probably for about two years. I was like, why don't we want to sing kumbaya? Like, you know, I, you know, I was new to church. I didn't really get it. And then all of a sudden it hit me. Singing kumbaya around a campfire is about my moment, our moment, enjoying ourselves, having fun with each other, an insta-worthy moment around a campfire, but reaching out to God is forgetting of our, ourselves and stepping out and reaching out to Him. Worship isn't singing, it's reaching. Worship isn't singing, it's reaching. Reaching is an active step. The woman with the issue of blood in Matthew chapter 9 was in Galilee and Jesus was coming past. And Jesus, no doubt, would have been surrounded by crowds upon crowds. He's walking through and she would have been on the sideline watching it all happen. He's walking past. And in Matthew chapter 9 verse 21, the Bible says it, she thought, if I, can, if I can just, if I can just touch his robe, I will, if I can just reach out and touch his robe, I will be healed. You gotta reach church. It doesn't just happen. We've gotta make it happen. She wasn't getting an invitation into the presence. There were hundreds of people probably crowded around him, but she pushed through the crowd. We've gotta make it happen, church. She said, I'm not gonna let Jesus pass me by. I'm gonna reach out and touch him. Write this down. You don't have to be a good singer to be a good worshiper. You don't have to be a good singer. A lot of people getting some big amens, especially from a couple of people in the front row here. Psalm 100 says, make a joyful noise. It doesn't say sing with perfect pitch in the key of A flat. It says, make a joyful noise. My mother, and you've heard a bit about her today, she can't clap in time. And it boggles my mind, especially because me and my sister, my sister's very musical. Uh, my sister and her husband, Dan, they run uh, Rise and Carpety, and she writes songs, and they're amazing. She wrote Immerse. We sing it all the time. And, um, you know, I would say I'm pretty musical. And my mum can't clap in time. But you know what? She's a worshiper, church. Not being able to clap in time doesn't stop her from shifting her heart towards God, reaching out to heaven and saying, hey, Lord, come with me. When we reach out to God, our perspective changes. Our proximity changes perspective. The closer we are to God, the less significant our problems are. If you, if you need to make a key decision in your business, this is the best place to be. Why don't you walk in through these doors on a Sunday morning and reach out to Jesus. Our answers are in his presence. If you're sick in your body and you need healing, the best thing that you can do is walk through the doors of this auditorium every Sunday and reach out to Jesus. If you need guidance on what God has for you, the best thing that you can do is walk through the doors of this auditorium every Sunday and reach out to Jesus. Our answers are in His presence. Our healing is in His presence. Our life is in His presence. Oh, come on in Jesus' name. Maybe you're in a good place and the God of exceeding abundance, the God of Ephesians 3.20 has a better future for you than what you can even dream of. Vision is in his presence. God already reached as far as he could. He reached down all the way from heaven, came down in the form of his son, so all we need to do is reach back. 
When Jesus was on the cross, he reached out his arms, took our burdens and sin on his shoulders. So all we need to do is reach. I've got five points for you today. For those taking notes, point number one, reaching together is easier than reaching alone. We see that Moses was tired. In, that, in the first uh, scripture I gave you, Moses was tired, but Aaron and her helped. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20 says, For wherever two or three come together in honor of my name, I am right there with them. It's easier, church, to reach together. This is the best place to reach out to God in worship. Sure, absolutely, you should worship at home, but it is easier, surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, to reach out. Every time you come to church, we reach. Point number two, it's up to you. It's up to you. Own your own worship. It's not up to Chris and Anna White or Ray and Emma. It's not up to a, a worship leader like Taylor, worship leading, to tell us, hey, come on, please, <laughs> please, <laughs> please reach out to heaven. You know, I'm desperate for you. Yeah, it's, it's not up to everybody else. It's up to us to own our own worship. You know, there are services in church that I regret. There are services that I regret. Would I do those church services again? Absolutely. What do I regret about those services? They are the services that I have sat in and watched. Or I've been too busy. I, I run every service across the country, so I get texts constantly, a thousand telegrams an hour. <laughs> of what's going on in other campuses, and maybe I've got distracted or half-heartedly participated. Those are the services I've regretted. And church, I have made a decision. I will never, I will never, I will never come into a service again and allow God to pass me by. Never can we come in again and watch the praise and worship. Never can we come again and just see the preaching because I'm gonna reach. We gotta reach. You gotta reach out to heaven. Point number three, drop what's in your hands. You can't reach out to God with full hands. You can't reach out to God with a coffee in your hands, with a juice in your hands, with your phone open and Instagram in your hands. You can't actually reach out to God with things in your hands. This is, pr this is not only practical, it's symbolic. We should leave our worries behind. Try and leave your burdens at the door so we can reach out to God. The stresses of life, Drop what's in your hands and worship Jesus. Point number four, engage your posture. Engage your posture. I might do a little singing now, I'm just kidding. Sometimes we need to change our physical state so we can reach God. I remember the first time I decided ever in a church service to change my physical state, and I was so nervous, you know. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna worship today. Oh, goodness me, you know, and uh, I was really self-conscious. I thought everybody's watching me and all the people next to me are watching and I don't know how this is going to go. So, so what I did was I shut my eyes and that was it. That was my whole, that was my whole change. That was all I could do. And I was super conscious that people would be watching me shut my eyes. And then I thought, you know what? My dad's on the floor crying and, you know, and they're probably watching him. So, so maybe what I could do, maybe I'll just try. Maybe I'll just try something. So what I did was I, uh, I began to change my posture. I did the first thing that we do, our first worship move, which is one hand up. With one hand up, it's kind of, kind of like, hi, Jesus, nice to meet you. That's kind of what one hand up is, you know. And then I was ready to graduate after I felt that maybe I didn't have to watch all the people around me. So I graduated to two hand up, two hands up, which is kind of like, how big was the fish you caught on holiday? This big, this big. But worship gets better, the fish was this big. It was a better trip, it was a better. 
And then I'm like, right, I am ready to graduate. We're going to another level. One hand up, which is kind of like, Jesus, I've got a question. And my question is, why did you make mosquitoes? They, they are not valuable. I don't know. I don't think they contribute to our ecosystem at all. Oh, I had another question. I wondered if Jesus wore nappies as a baby. Or, or maybe he just farted moonbeams. That, that's probably the way. And I, and, but from, from having one hand up, you know, maybe you could wash the windows. You might want to wash lower windows or higher windows. You know, um, Joel Chisholm's leading praise tonight, and uh, he, often, he often tells people that they're out. You're out. And if, for any cricket fans, oh, they hit a six. You know, whatever we do, church, we got to change our posture. Our posture is a physical manifestation of an internal decision. Lifting our hands says, I reach first and my heart will follow. We're not playing tiddlywinks, people. We're worshiping the creator of heaven and earth, the God who made us, who loved us, who saves us, who forgives us, who frees us. Come on, we've got to change our posture. And point number five, the last point, engage your faith. Engage your faith. Reaching out is all about intentionality. Reaching out is all about intentionality. In a moment, we're going to sing a song. And as we sing a song, think about the words. But read them, take them in, judge them. Do you believe them? Are they true? And then it's time to make a conscious decision. That's the moment that you decide to switch from I'm watching to I'm all in. That's the moment where you say, there's no full black plan. There's no, there's no full back plan. There's no other options. I'm not gonna sit and watch Jesus pass by. I'm gonna go all in. Engaging your faith is believing what God has said and done, and it's as simple as, as that. Why, church? Because singing is our religion, but reaching is our faith. Singing is our religion, but reaching, that's it. come on, right across this auditorium this morning, why don't you stand to your feet? Why don't you stand to your feet with me? And we're gonna pray. We're gonna reach out. We're gonna take a moment right now and reach out to the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Thank you, Lord, that you are here in this place. Come on, church, I encourage you, reach out to God. Lord, we thank you that you are here in this place. We thank you, God, for who you are. Lord, we reach out to you. We reach out. We know, God, that, that, that our answers are in your presence. Our healing is in your presence. Our victory is in your presence. Our life is found in your presence. And God, we worship you. We look to you.